Good morning. We are ready to start a new chapter, chapter 15. We're getting really close to the end of this book, which means we get to start the new book. Yay! Okay, we're going to be going over uh, perimeter and area of polygons. Now, we've explored distance units, unit conversions. Now it's time to start measuring. Suppose you were taking a measuring tape, measure the length of each wall in a room. If you added up all those lengths, you would have found the distance around the room. The mathematical term used to express the distance around a closed shape is perimeter. Finding the <coughs> pardon me. Finding the perimeter of a polygon is simple. Add up the sides. That'll give you the total distance around the shape. Perimeter of any polygon equals the sums uh, the sum of the lengths of each side. Example. Find the perimeter of these irregular polygons. Add it up. There you go. That's all you do. Simple, simple. Turn to the next page. All right. Uh, here's some other uh, regular polygons. They're just wanting you. You just add it up. That's all you do. All right. <coughs> <coughs> As with anything in math, <coughs> pardon me, we're constantly looking for ways to save ourselves needless steps. Let's take a look at some shortcuts we could use to find the perimeter of regular polygons and rectangles. So with regular polygons, uh, those are regular polygons, if you'll remember, those are polygons that have all, they have the same, all their sides are the same. Okay, so for instance, if you have uh, a square, that means all four sides are the same. That's what a square is. You have a triangle, you've got three sides. It may not necessarily be the same. Uh, that would be an equilateral. Look, well, I'm at the bottom of 300. You, so you have a regular quadrilateral, which is a square, four sides. The shortcut is to just say, okay, four times, what's the length of one side? Four times that, and that gives you your perimeter. If you have an equilateral triangle, just take the length of one side and multiply it by three. If you have a heptagon, that's seven sides, take the measurement of one of those, measure it times seven. So the perimeter of a regular polygon is the number of sides times the length of the side. So all you got is just a little shortcut, okay? Now look at the next page, you see rectangles there. Look down where it says perimeter of rectangle equals two times the length plus two times the width. That's because on a rectangle, you have two long sides and you have two short sides. So to find the perimeter, a shortcut would be to, well, hmm, shortcut would be if this were, if this side was five and then this side was three, well, to find the perimeter, you would say five times two, or five, I'm sorry, five plus no, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. I need more coffee today, I think. Five times the, two times five. Blah, blah. Plus three times two. So that would be the perimeter of a rectangle. So then that would be 10 plus six. So the perimeter would be 16, whatever the unit, inches, millimeters, yards, whatever it is, 16 yards or whatever, okay? That's what it's showing you how to figure uh, the perimeter of a rectangle. Now, look at the bottom, very bottom of 301, length and width, which is which? You may sometimes wonder which is the length and which is the width. For instance, in this rectangle, which is the length? which is the width. Definitions can vary. Some people will call the longest sides the length and the other the width. Others would use the word height to describe the long sides of the rectangle and either length or width for the others. If you were writing a paragraph about an object, the terms you might use matter, might matter. However, when it comes to determining length and width in this course, it doesn't matter which you use. You can use any side of the rectangle to represent the length or the width or the height. You can think of one side as the height and find the perimeter by multiplying two times the height instead of two times the width. The point is that we accurately find the perimeter by multiplying both different sides together. Different sized sides of the rectangle by two 
and then adding those together so that we have found the distance around all four sides. Okay, now at the very bottom of 302, there's another big gray box, but we're not going to read it. Basically, this is what it's telling you. From here on out, whenever you have a story problem, it's not going to let you know when the units are different. For instance, it might have a story problem, yards and feet or whatever, and you're going to have to do the conversions yourself. It's not going to give you a hint. It's not going to have it in bold. It says basically just from here on out, watch for those on those word problems. Watch on all the problems because they're not going to tell you when they're going to try to quote fool you. Okay, so that means we have to keep a watch. All right, so let's look at worksheet 15.1 that goes with this. Uh, real easy. It's just perimeter. Um, make sure you always, on your answer, always include your unit. Now in 1A, uh, we're just going to find the perimeter. A regular nonagon with 34 inch sides. Do you remember how many sides a nonagon has? Nine. So if each side is 34 inches long, your equation then would be 34 times nine. And then your answer would be however many inches. Okay, so make sure you do those. And then on number two on the back, you can use your calculator. So just uh, use what you know to fill that out. Not gonna grade this page. Uh, it should be pretty easy. So let me know though if you have any questions. That's all for today.